Son Hunkai Scallywag 100 miles in the lead, but skipper David Witt is leaving nothing to chance and taking every opportunity he can to find out what his opposition are up to. Morning, we need to know, has Vestas jibed? Are you really winning? David Witt doing his best to try and pull on every single resource he can to keep this 100 mile lead. I've got Gonzalo Infante, Chief Meteorological Officer for the Volvo Ocean Race here for a very good reason. There is a chance that lead might be under threat. More on that in just a moment. First of all, big news. The Chinese team, Dongfeng race team, into stealth mode. So let's go and take a look at the current positions of the fleet right now. We have got Team Brunel, Turn the Tide on Plastic, and the Spanish boat Mafre at the back. Mafre, the overall leaders, seriously struggling at the moment. Ahead of them, Team Axonobel, with Dongfeng Race Team somewhere, Vestas 11th Hour Racing in second place, then the big move. Sun Hunkai Scallywag, over 100 miles at times in the lead. It's looking incredibly impressive for them, but can they hold it? Will they continue to lead all the way to the finish line in Hong Kong? Now, Gonzalo, this is why I got you here. Uh, before we came on air, you were looking pretty nervous about the lead and you were talking to me in a manner that gave me a little bit of a cause for concern. Is there reason for fans of Sun Hunkai Scallywag to feel nervous? Can they hold this? Yeah, well, absolutely they can hold it, but it's uh, th certainly very tricky times. Uh, let me tell you a rule, a very important rule in offshore. If you don't trust your forecast or if you know nothing, what you do is you try to go as fast as you can to with the destination. And this is what uh, it's looking like David Witt and his team is trying to do now. Uh, they keep sailing uh, towards Hong Kong and ignoring completely what the forecast is saying and trying to gain a skate after skate. But why this could be wrong is because uh, if we look a little bit ahead in time, uh, we see how uh, the wind speed further north is decreasing a little bit. There are substantial reasons for that to happen. We know there's a low pressure developing in Japan and south of this low pressure there's no much breeze. That's why we have confidence that this is true and that's why we think that they should have taken uh, a small jive, uh, maybe the previous night. Okay, so they haven't jibed, so what do we think this is going to affect them? If we've got Vestas 11th Hour Racing, the orange boat, uh, to the south of them at the moment on our screens, Sun Hunkai to the north, how does this play out? Well, if they, if they jibe uh, in like uh, 20 hours time from now, when they cross the bow of Vestas, their lead will be evaporated in to maybe 30 miles, and this is a very critical distance. It's way hard to keep a solid lift lead if you are uh, in less than 30 miles. Obviously, the conditions in the South China Sea will be very good, so if they manage to cross ahead, well ahead of uh, Vestas, it should be okay, but 20 miles, 30 miles, it starts to be enough as per to put a lot of pressure on you. Okay, all right, so then the big question for you that I have, if you were on board Sun Hunkai Scallywag, what would your instructions be for the team? I would jive, I would jive, because uh, I think it's a stronger position being farther south and it's easier to cover the fleet uh, from, from that position. Okay, so a little bit of work needing to be done for teams of Sun Hunkai Scallywag. David Witt, I'm sure, will be thinking very carefully about his next move. Another boat thinking equally carefully is Vestas 11th Hour Racing, currently in second place. And just before we came on air, we spoke to Tony Mata to get his thoughts on the race. But first, to wish him a very happy birthday. Yeah, it's pretty funny, actually. I don't know if I've ever had a birthday at sea before, on the, um, in the, even in the previous races. I think I've always been on land or... I certainly don't recall it anyway. It's been good. I got uh, I got treated well. I had a little uh, pack of uh, Tim Tams, which I've shared with the crew. The girls have bought and um, some bounty bars, which is my favourite. So um, it's been been pretty good. They didn't give me a day off. No, that, but uh, that's that's all fine. We can't wait to get get to Hong Kong. Well, let's talk about Hong Kong. Let's talk about what's coming up because obviously Sun Kai Scallywag has had a massive assault on the lead. What can you guys do from where you are? Um, it's really difficult for us right now. We, I mean, the, the Scallywag did such a great job. You know, they had a blinder coming from behind, all the way from behind and uh, down to Lewitt there and went straight through and missed all of the, um, all the doldrums as such, where we've had to sort of battle it out um, with the north. So all we can really do is just try and beat the boats in our group and hope for maybe um, 
some respite in um, the lee of Taiwan when they maybe they get held up a little bit there and uh, also if they get held up in the river going into Hong Kong maybe we can catch up a little bit but right now between between now and the top of the uh, the Straits of Luzon they're probably going to steadily pull away I expect them to be over 100 miles pretty quickly. And what about Dongfeng race team obviously now in stealth mode what's your take on it? They probably went at stealth just to sort of hide how far how far south they've gone or how close the Philippines they've gone and it's probably it's a good move I sort of I expected AXO to do it first and they haven't which is kind of strange but um, I guess we'll, we'll be going stealth at some point too probably about the time Dong Fen come out and then that way they don't know where we are and what's your take on where Dong Fong race team might be you mentioned they were going south how far um, I would expect them either on our line right now or inside our line so um, at, a, at a guess um, that's all we all we can do is guess looking because I mean they were closer to AXO AXO has been sailing really, really well this league, as you know, probably noticed, and uh, you've got to be a little bit careful. And what about for yourself, your closest rival into stealth mode? Does it make you nervous? I tell you, it always makes, makes us nervous when we can't see them. I mean, I mean, as I say, right now, they're basically running out of runway to the, to the south, closer to the Philippines. There's not a lot of room down there to sort of wriggle by. There's a little bit of room, but not a lot. And, we, and as we... Every hour we get closer to the top of the Luzon Strait, that gate, that door's getting closed, so um, that option gets gets a lot harder for, for any boats that on that side. So far, so good, the way that this leg's turning out for you. Yeah, it would have been good to have a win. That would have really thrown us up the up the board um, a lot, you know, with this leg. But, I mean, it's still not over yet, but we'll um, we'll, we'll be trying. But, uh, yeah, Mapfrey have found themselves on the back foot, which is pretty interesting, and uh, as has uh, Brunel. So, I mean, all going well, we can, even if we end up second, uh, you know, we'll slip back into second and uh, extend on third or fourth, which was uh, Brunel. Um, and we sort of, the split sort of kind of ends up getting split in half about now at the end of this leg. Race control here, we think you should have a day off from sailing because it's your birthday. Ask him, see what he says. Uh, race control says, uh, can I have a day off from sailing since it's my birthday? He said on the 21st. <laughs> on the right. 21st, I can have the day off. All right, well, that's better than nothing. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks very much for talking to us. See you in Hong Kong. So no days off for Tony Munter, but there is a lot at stake, and I can understand why his crew are pushing him so hard. Let's take a look at the scores predicted. This is not the official scoreboard. This is going to be the point after we see the boats finish leg four. If everyone stays in their current positions, you can see the lead that Maffrey built on the last leg evaporate to only three points. Vestas, 11th hour racing, will be very pleased to see themselves in a strong second. Dongfeng race team slips one point behind them. They will be in third. And then team Sun Hung Kai Scallywag starts to get within range. They would still need a couple of very big results. However, as we've seen in leg four, anything can happen out on the water. And we caught up with one sailor that knows only too well how tight these races come down to the wire. Martine Grail on board Team Axenabel, and I asked her about Dongfong race team and what they were doing with the French-Chinese team in stealth mode. Uh, well, we're gonna see you when they come out of stealth mode. Uh, they've been for the last uh, two scans, and, and uh, we're pretty sure they uh, must have had son seen something and uh, maybe jabbed away, so we were uh, hoping that the way we took was favorable for us. We got two nice shifts, and uh, we we're waiting for the results when they come out of stealth mode. The fleet are doing a fair few jibes. What is it that you guys are jibing on? We've been getting 20-degree uh, uh, shifts, and today we got one of the biggest ones, and it's a hard one to know when's the right time to go, especially when sometimes you cross the fleet well, sometimes you don't. There's still some, uh, some clouds with rain, so it's a bit tricky. From where you guys are in the race, can Mafre do anything at this point, or are you guys just worried about the boats ahead? Uh, it's not over until it's over. People already said, oh yeah, 80 miles is a long way, and then you know people caught up right close to us so uh, many times already in this race, in this leg. So <laughs> I think anything is possible. Uh, now, Martin, you've been with the team from the beginning. How have you guys developed now that you're finding yourself on leg four in a pretty strong position? 
A lot of teams, teams have been switching crews. I was surprised it was not only us. You can see that, you know, it's a pretty physical uh, race and pretty mental race as well, you know, keeping it together. The most amazing thing, uh, thing about this race is the recovery, you know, how things can change from the beginning to the end of the race. And uh, we're trying to be part of that change and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get good results from now on. Martin Grail on board Team Axenabel, and you can watch very closely. That boat is going to be pushing very hard all the way to the finish line. The big question is, Dongfeng Race Team coming out of stealth mode, what will their position be? Well, the fans waiting at the finish line in Hong Kong will be keeping their eyes glued firmly to the tracker. And very good news that I can bring you right now. After this show, the intention is for the race tracker to be going live. So watch this space. You are going to be able to follow the teams inch by inch as they get to the finish line in Hong Kong. And the fans out there right now are waiting with bated breath. Sun Hunkai Skellywag, 100 miles in the lead. On the ground is Jamie Bogue, lives and breathes sailing in the Hong Kong city. He was the CEO of Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing, the winners of the previous edition. We spoke to him about a little bit of the festivities getting underway, but also Li Jiazhu, Radial gold medalist in London 2012 and a huge Dongfeng race team fan weighs in with her thoughts. It's, it's pretty exciting. You know, there's been a lot of uh, anticipation about this event for quite a long time. Um, and as ever, the reality of the race village being built and, and with Sun Hung Kai piling on the miles on the rest of the fleet, um, there's a palpable sense of excitement here at the minute. It's fantastic. Now, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you your opinion on what's happening at the race right now. First off, did you think that Sun Hung Kai Scallywag could do it from the position that they were in? Uh, I, I must admit, I, there's, uh, I, I, I think, I think they've, they've probably been slightly surprised themselves at, at the extent to which they've, uh, they've succeeded with their manoeuvre. I mean, I, I think it was always a move that was designed to catch up um, and certainly put them in contention. But uh, I'd be surprised if anybody in their wildest dreams thought they'd be this far ahead. But, but it's really worked out and they've, they've, they've stolen a lead on the whole fleet. And, uh, and let's hope they can keep it together for the next couple of days. They've got a pretty substantial lead at the minute. Um, still some tricky waters to cross, but, uh, but fingers crossed they can, they can hang on to that uh, until Friday. At the moment, Sun Hung Kai Scallywag, a Hong Kong boat, leading the fleet into Hong Kong. We could get Dong Fong race team in second, we could have a 1-2 a for Hong Kong and China. That would be quite a moment. Yeah, um, if Hong Kong team can win for this leg, it must be a great achievement and for, the, for their home fans as well, um, inspiring those Hong Kong people. But I think the sailing atmosphere in Hong Kong is pretty good because they have warm weather, they have racing almost every weekend, I'm sure a lot of crowd will gather together and to watch this uh, wonderful moment. How many people are there in Hong Kong right now that are following David Witt and Sun Hung Kai's scallywag exploits? Well, you know, there's, there's three big yacht clubs here. Um, uh, every time we go out for dinner, every time we meet for a beer, every time we go sailing, um, it's the subject for discussion. So uh, as a sample survey, it's, uh, it's the hot topic right now. What sort of welcome can the teams expect when they get to Hong Kong and then to Guangzhou? Yeah, it's true. They're heading home at the moment, both to Hong Kong and Guangzhou, and all the home fans were traveling to Hong Kong to welcome them as well. I think a lot of young sailors are inspired by those Chinese offshore sailors who's been on board Team Dongfeng. And then they set out a good model for all the Chinese sailors. And hopefully in future, there are more Chinese offshore sailors that's competing, who will be competing in a professional uh, sailing event and to light the Volvo Ocean Race. The, the fleet are going to spend quite a bit of time in Hong Kong and up to Guangzhou in China. What sort of things uh, have you seen already at the, at the stopover? Yeah, I mean, the race village is, uh, it only opened today, but already there's a lot of people here. Um, I know there's plans for uh, some, some big concerts um, for some local sort of canto pop stars, which is huge out here. Um, lots of signage around the city. Um, and uh, lots of excitement to engage not only the sailing community, but the, the wider community of Hong Kong. So um, I think it's going to be fantastic. There are many gold medal winners in the Volvo Ocean Race. Are you tempted to join the race at all? Very much so. And um, in fact, I did try some training with Team Dong Phone um, earlier last year. But unfortunately, I still got too many injuries and need to sort out and to trying to recover and hopefully 
I can do more sailing in the coming future, not just inshore and some offshore as well. This is the first time that the Volvo Ocean Race has come to Hong Kong and with a Hong Kong boat leading, this is going to be something special. I mean, it really is special. You know, we've seen in previous races when the when the home team comes in in first place, the, the difference that that can have in the mood, even a podium position is, is well celebrated, but, but to win and to win in the manner uh, in which Scallywag is currently doing and, and the problems that they've had makes it makes it a sort of fairy tale. It's, uh, I don't think you could have scripted it better. Big prep going on right now in Hong Kong. That's it for us today, but don't forget Dongfeng race team in stealth mode. At the moment, they will be coming out of stealth, stealth mode in a couple of position reports time, and you will know precisely when it is because the tracker is going to go live at the end of this show. So watch that space. Keep up to date with all the action on all our social media channels. We've got a quick fix for you in the morning, and then at 1300 UTC, another daily show. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.